While many animal studies have found that nicotinamide riboside and nicotinamide mononucleotide can ameliorate age-related disease by increasing NAD levels in different tissues, there is always one disease context that throws a curveball, cancer. In a recent study, nicotinamide mononucleotide was shown to accelerate cancer growth in mice with a type of pancreatic cancer where pro-inflammatory senescent cells drive tumor growth. When mice were injected with 500 milligrams per kilogram body weight of nicotinamide mononucleotide for 13 days, they exhibited significant increases in precancerous and cancerous lesions in the pancreas. So let's talk about this a little more because nicotinamide mononucleotide's effect on accelerating tumor growth was dependent on senescent cells, which can disrupt normal tissue functions and, ironically, also drive the progression of cancer over time as well. This is in spite of the fact that senescence is a program that usually prevents cancer more immediately in the short term. The reason this happens is that when cells become senescent, they can secrete molecules that tend to have the following qualities. They are pro-inflammatory. They're involved in immune activation and evading the immune system. They're involved in growth signaling and also involved in angiogenesis, which plays a role in cancer metastasis. NAD seems to increase this quality of senescent cells, likely because it's being used in terms of energy metabolism. So it's making these senescent cells even more tumorigenic. And while this study only looked at nicotinamide mononucleotide's effect on cancer growth, it's quite possible that nicotinamide riboside may show similar results in this very, very specific context, which is a type of cancer where pro-inflammatory senescent cells drive tumor growth. That does not mean that nicotinamide mononucleotide or nicotinamide riboside supplementation will cause cancer or even drive tumor progression in other types of cancer. But I will say it would be nice to see long-term animal studies to confirm. I'm sure those are underway. There are headlines popping up all over the place claiming that supplementing with nicotinamide riboside, which is a form of vitamin B3, increases cancer rates. The drama stems from this paper here which concluded that NR supplementation results in a significant increase in cancer prevalence and metastases of triple negative breast cancer to the brain. This is a big deal in the longevity space because many people use vitamin B3 supplements such as NR or NMN to support their NAD levels and NAD is a molecule that's central to our metabolism. So the last thing that we want to do is take a supplement that will increase cancer rates. But to cut to the chase, this whole saga is a classic example of people reading an abstract of a paper, panicking, and then extrapolating all sorts of nonsense. So instead, let's dive into the details of this paper and make sure to subscribe. The authors manufactured highly aggressive breast cancer cells and then directly injected them into 19 separate mice. That in itself is a massive red flag. Normal mice and humans don't just have highly aggressive of breast cancer cells injected directly into them. Instead, cancer develops by a series of mutations in the cells that cause uncontrolled growth. In humans, we've got a fantastic study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it was looking at nicotinamide, which is also another form of vitamin B3, to see if it could be protective against skin cancer. This was a double-blind, randomized controlled trial, where half of the participants took 500 milligrams of nicotinamide twice a day, and the other half took placebo, and the study ran for 12 months. At the 12 month mark, they could see that the rate of new non-melanoma skin cancers was lower by a whopping 23% in the nicotinamide group compared to the placebo and this was statistically significant. This led to the conclusion that oral nicotinamide is safe and effective in reducing the rates of new non-melanoma skin cancers in high risk patients. Therefore, it's plausible that by supplementing with vitamin B3, we are supporting our NAD levels, leading to less DNA damage and less cancer rates. But the new paper that's caused all of this drama completely bypasses that probable protective effect. Plus, the study only used 19 mice, so by week 10, 7 out of the 10 mice in the nicotinamide riboside group, they had detectable tumours, so 70% of them, while only 5 out of the 9 mice in the control group, so 55%, had tumours, resulting in a 27% increased tumour prevalence. Now that sounds like a lot, but this does not reach statistical significance because again, they're using so few mice in the study. And in the second part of the study, the highly aggressive breast cancer cells, they were injected directly into the hearts of the mice, and it was this experiment that they could see an increase in brain metastases in the nicotinamide riboside group. Once again though, normal mice and humans don't have breast cancer cells directly injected into the 
their hearts. We cannot extrapolate this to normal humans and normal mice. To cap things off, one of the authors of the study had a pretty damning statement. He said that the title of the news article, Popular Dietary Supplement Causes Cancer Risk and Brain Metastases, is clickbait material and totally inaccurate from a scientific standpoint. The experiment does not allow for this conclusion. Besides, if we wanted to see what happens when nicotinamide riboside is given to mice for their lifetime, we've got fantastic research from the Interventions Testing Program. And while that paper didn't show an improvement with nicotinamide riboside supplements, it certainly didn't show an increase in cancer rates. Overall, there is no evidence that vitamin B3 supplements, including NR, NMN, nicotinamide, or niacin, cause cancer. It's probably the opposite, where they're likely protective, and we've got evidence of this protective effect in humans. Instead, what is an open question is what happens when vitamin B3 is given to people that already have diagnosed cancer. In those cases, will vitamin B3 help fuel that existing cancer growth? Don't know. And if I had diagnosed cancer, I would not supplement with vitamin B3. That's a massive difference. This Researchers studied the effects of NAD on triple negative breast cancer, or TNBC, which is notoriously hard to treat. The cells of TNBC lack the three common receptors that are usually found on the surface of breast cancer cells. No receptors means drugs don't have anything to latch onto, so it's difficult to target the cells with treatments. But this study showed that continuous use of NMN significantly impeded tumor growth and metastasis in mice with similar results on cells taken from a human cancer patient. So the researchers first did a study in the laboratory in vitro to see what would happen when they added NMN to the cells. And what they found was pretty interesting. They discovered NMN increased the levels of NAD in the cells really quickly. And here's the kicker. While NMN didn't affect the growth of the cancer cells, it did slow down their ability to spread and invade other cells. That's pretty important because spreading and invading is kind of cancer's shtick. So how does NMN do this? Well, they sequenced the RNA of the tumor and found that NMN activated certain genes that are involved in regulating the body's antioxidants. Specifically, one of the most important antioxidants, glutathione. But that's not all. Turns out, TNBC was associated with low SIRT1 protein levels, so patients with higher levels of SIRT1 had better survival rates, so they tested resveratrol, another controversial supplement that might affect SIRT1, and found that it also decreased the spread of TNBC cells, but again, did not affect their growth. Same thing. So pioneers like David Sinclair have made some strong statements about resveratrol and others have pushed back. So this study does seem to support the idea that it activates SIRT1. The researchers looked at something called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress occurs when there are too many free radicals in the body roaming around and it's been linked to a number of health problems, including cancer. They found that both NMN and SIRT1 acted to decrease oxidative stress and that this might play a role in slowing the spread of cancer. What's more, this research also seems to be pointing towards SIRT1 and NMN having an impact on a specific protein, that guy. So we're zeroing in, but this study does make it seem like raising NAD levels through NMN supplementation could be useful in treating this stubborn subtype of breast cancer. Today we'll have a look at a recent study showing how NMN helps to fight cancer and extend lifespan by supporting natural killer cells. Here is the study, NAD plus salvage governs mitochondrial metabolism, invigorating natural killer cell anti-tumor immunity. In one of the experiments, human liver tumor cells were grafted onto immunodeficient mice, which were injected with either NK92 cells or NK92 cells, which were pre-treated with NMN. NK92 cells are a line of human natural killer cells. We can see that the tumor growth in NMN-treated cells was markedly reduced. Looking at the Kaplan-Meier curve, we can see that the NMN-treated mice also had significantly extended lifespans. Another test they ran was with mouse melanoma cells from a cell line called B16. These were treated with NK cells, which had either been pre-treated with NMN or not. The results show reduced tumor growth in terms of weight and volume for those that were treated with NMN. They note that NK cells are an emerging area for tumor immunotherapy as they are safe and not tied to specific antigens. And as noted, NK cells lose some of their ability to kill cancer cells in the tumor microenvironment. 
Their conclusion is that NAD plus salvage is an essential factor for NK cell homeostasis and function, which suggests a potential strategy for invigorating NK cell-based immunotherapy. Here is the study. Nicotinamide mononucleotide enhances the efficacy and persistence of CD19 CAR T cells via NAD plus SIRT1 axis. It is currently in preprint, so has not been peer-reviewed yet. A quick summary of the paper. Chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR T cells, have been shown to be able to have significant impact on blood-based cancers, which are otherwise difficult to target. However, they do have drawbacks, particularly with poor persistence, which is to say the cells die off quite quickly. NMN has been shown to have anti-aging effects and increase NAD levels. But whether these effects would work on CAR T cells has not been studied. They saw that NMN in vitro helped maintain the number of proliferative stem cell-like memory cells and memory cells, as well as lengthen telomeres and improve proliferation while reducing senescence and apoptosis. In vivo, they showed that it reduced tumor growth in a mouse model. In conclusion, NMN enhances the efficacy and longevity of CD19 CAR T cells via the NAD plus SIR1 axis. The first they used luciferin to be able to visualize the tumors in the mice. The CAR-T was effective at reducing the tumor growth, but the CAR-T plus NMN was more effective, and we can see this increased over time, which would make sense as one of the functions of the NMN was to increase the longevity and viability of the CAR-T cells. A part of the study that we did not cover showed that inhibiting CERT1 significantly reduced the effect of the NMN, showing that the mechanism of action was through CERT1. In summary, the study showed the clinical potential of NMN to help CAR T therapy by making the cells more viable, proliferative, and long-lived, leading to greater anti-tumor efficacy. Here is the paper. Nicotinamide mononucleotide augments the cytoxic activity of natural killer cells in young and elderly mice. In this study, they looked at the effects of NMN on NK cells in mice. Injected NMN increased the cytoxic activity in both young and elderly mice. It is good to see that they also tried oral NMN, as this is how most people take it, and also found that it has similar effects. The population of NK cells did not increase and if interferon gamma was removed, the effects stopped working, so the mechanism was through IFN gamma. In summary, they saw that NMN supplementation helped the cytoxicity of NK cells in a manner which was dependent on interferon gamma in mice. The number of NK cells did not increase, so the increased cytoxicity was driven by improved NK function. As mentioned, they also used oral administration and saw similar results at 625 milligrams per kilogram per day as those where it was injected. So oral administration of NMN may have similar effects on immune cells. So another potential benefit of NMN to help the immune system to fight cancer and really interesting given the questions about bioavailability of oral NMN that oral and injected NMN saw similar results.